we're going to assume you have never programmed before. In fact, you may never even have heard of an Arduino. So let's do the quicker bit first and introduce you to the Arduino. This is an Arduino. It has a small microcontroller, this black thing in the middle, which has been mounted on a blue printed circuit board, or PCB. The PCB also connects these other electronic components that are needed to support it. The job of the Arduino is to take electronic signals as inputs and process them to produce outputs. The inputs can come from a wide number of sources, including push buttons, switches, joysticks, sliders, microphones, light sensors, temperature sensors, the list goes on and on. The outputs can go to an equally long list, including LEDs, indicators, buzzers, speakers, displays, motors, pumps and servos. In this course, we're going to learn how to connect an Arduino and command it to follow our instructions. It's a practical course and works best if you follow it through and test each stage for yourself. We've tried to keep the costs to a minimum whilst displaying a full range of Arduino capabilities. As an input device, we have selected a small PS2 joystick and a low-cost servo as an output. Both of these are readily available via the internet. Although we are using an Arduino with its own scripting commands, almost everything you learn here can be applied to other systems and other computer languages. We will try to use all of the correct terminology so that it too can become familiar. This is therefore a very good place to start and to decide whether computing and electronics are for you. New vocabulary will drop down here as it's mentioned and this exclamation mark appears to alert you to the really important stuff. One great thing about the Arduino, apart from its low cost, is that it only needs one USB connection to operate. All of our commands pass down this cable and it can talk back with replies that can be used to analyse what it is doing. It does not need a separate power supply as the USB cable also carries sufficient juice to run all of the projects we have planned here. Another great thing is that it can be connected to a desktop computer, a laptop, a tablet or a pad a Raspberry Pi, and even a mobile phone. If that wasn't good enough, it does not care whether you're running Linux, Mac OS, Android, or Windows. It seems the Arduino is a friendly board and will talk to anyone. The type of device you are running is known as a platform, and the software that controls it is called the operating system. As the Arduino does not care which of these it talks to, it's known as agnostic. Platform and operating system Agnostic, agnostic, agnostic. You, however, do care about what you are running and have to install the correct software for the device you're using. All of the software you need to connect your device is available from the home of the Arduino, www.arduino.cc. It's packed with all that's good in the Arduino world and a fantastic source of help and advice should you become interested in going further with the Arduino. The Arduino project is part of what is known as open source. This is where vast numbers of people gather together to share developments for the common good. It's a very powerful movement that you can join and benefit from. You can start by clicking on this download section, which reveals this page, where you can select the link to download the software needed for your operating system. The instructions for all of the options here should be quite clear to follow with care. If you're using an Android device, then download the impressive Arduino Droid app. Here, we're going to use a Raspberry Pi to demonstrate the interface to the Arduino, as later we're going to fully interconnect the two. Now, let's just quickly look at the difference between the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino, as they really are two different boards. Both boards can be fitted with a series of shields that expand their basic capabilities. They can both read and write inputs and outputs on their pins, but that's where the similarity ends. The Raspberry Pi 3 has a very much more powerful processor. It has more memory, Ethernet networking, Wi-Fi, and four USB interfaces for keyboard, mouse, and printer connections. It can also run a full HDMI display, and with its SD card, can run an operating system like Raspbian, running many programs in a graphical user interface. The Arduino is much smaller, it runs about 1% of the speed of the Pi. It has a tiny memory, no networking or operating system. It's a very much more limited device that accepts its programs from another device and just runs them. The only area where it does win is that it has slightly more powerful output signals. It is smaller and is designed just to do a single task very quickly and precisely. 
When the Pi is running an operating system, running other programs, checking its network, updating its screen, it can sometimes become overloaded with distractions and may not respond as precisely as the Arduino that concentrates on providing accurate and powerful signals. To install the software that allows the Pi to communicate with the Arduino, click on the small black terminal icon to open a console. You should be presented with this prompt, which means that the Pi is awaiting your command. Ensure you have internet access and enter sudo apt-get install Arduino. The Pi will spend some minutes fetching and installing all of the software you need. Be patient and wait for the prompt to reappear. Click on the menu button and select Programming. If all has gone well, the Arduino option should be available to click. Eventually, this screen appears. There are now only three things that need to be done to check that everything is working. The first thing is to plug in the Arduino into any USB port on the Pi. There are four light emitting diodes, LEDs, on the Arduino. The first is this green power LED that comes on when the Arduino has juice. The other three are these two LEDs that flash when the Arduino communicates with your device, and this one that is connected to pin 13 on this row of headers that we will program very shortly. The headers allow us to plug in wires to connect to the board, as we will also do later. Now onto the final process, talking to the Arduino. It's traditional when learning any language for the first program to say hello world, and who are we to define this tradition? We will prove that the Arduino is working and connected correctly by getting it to say hello world. It will do this because we instruct it to by sending it the instructions. These instructions are our program or code. As the programs on the Arduino are so short, they are called sketches. Now this is going to make little sense at the moment. In fact, it all appears to be gobbledygook. But after you've typed it in a few times, it'll soon become familiar and commonplace. Just follow this through for the moment. Click into this white box. It's called the editor pane, and it's where we type in all of our sketches. Enter the following two lines. Void setup, void loop. A number of things start to happen immediately. The first is that the words turn brown. Now this is a good sign. It means the system understands what we are typing and confirming that it can interpret what is being entered. The words setup and loop are even shown in bold. Now void can mean nothing or empty, which is strange as it appears in both lines, but it does need to be here. Setup and loop are what are known as functions. Just guess what they mean and do. Yes, the setup sets up the Arduino, ready for use, and the loop is the program that goes round and round continuously, which is what computers are good at, doing the same thing over and over again. The characters that tend to cause the most confusion are the brackets, but these brackets are just containers for our code, and this format will become very familiar as we move on through the course. In computing, we call square brackets like these square brackets. In computing, we call curly brackets like these curly brackets. In computing, we call angle brackets like these angle brackets. And in computing, we call round brackets like these parentheses. A new word? Go out and use it and impress your friends. Parentheses. As we only have a single USB cable connecting our device to the Arduino, all of the communications have to pass up and down a character at a time in a long serial string, one after the other. That's why it's called a serial connection. It's a computer version of Morse code. The Arduino needs to be told how to set this up and how fast to talk. It could speak really quickly. Clearly, it could speak incredibly slowly. The command that is used to establish this link is serial.begin9600, and it goes into the setup. And once it's done, that is it. Set up a serial command and begin to speak at 9600 bits per second. That's all right, we don't have to talk at 9,600 bits per second. The computers do, and can, quite easily. Notice that there's no space in this line, only a dot. The S in serial is in capitals. Finally, if you're going to instruct the Arduino, it will do as it's told, but expects you to be polite. 
You have to say please at the end of every command, but rather than type out the word please, the Arduino is quite happy if you just substitute a semicolon for please. So the rule is, every command line has to have a semicolon at the end. That's it for setup. The Arduino has been told to configure itself and how fast to speak. But now, what's it going to say? In this loop section, we're going to add two lines. Serial.println, hello world, delay 1000. You can almost read this sketch directly in plain English. A serial printer line, hello world, please. Serial, capital S notice, dot print line. We can shove print a line together into a shortened command and make it quicker to type. Then what has to be said in speech marks and surround the whole thing in round bracket parentheses and say please at the end of the command with a semicolon. Brilliant. Looks picky, but as I say, it will soon become familiar to use. Many computer languages use the same style of formatting as this. The last command is delay a thousand, but a thousand what? Well, we know that computers work quickly and the Arduino is no slouch. That delay is not a thousand minutes or even a thousand seconds. It's a thousand milliseconds. And like a thousand millimetres in a metre, there are a thousand milliseconds in a second. So this delay is for a thousand milliseconds, i.e. one second. Semicolon please, on the end. There is a problem here. Arduinos are built in Italy and only speak Italian. Our code is in English. Do we need to convert it? Well, yes and no. Wherever they come from, computers, at their most basic level, tend to speak digital. Digits are only ones and zeros. We need to convert our program into the ones and zeros the Arduino does understand. It's a process called compiling, and we have to compile our code. Luckily, we don't have to do anything. Our device does all of this for us. It will take us ages and probably be full of errors if we did. So let's compile the code. Suggesting the Arduino spoke Italian was stupid. I don't know why I said it. But there are a lot of different Arduinos in the Arduino family, and they do all expect slightly different arrangements. Up until now, I've been showing you the most popular Arduino, and the one we'll be using in this course. It's called the Uno. Other Arduinos range from very small to the quite powerful. Before we can do any compiling, we need to tell our device which Arduino we're using. Go up to this menu to Tools and select Boards from the drop-down menu. Look at the long list of options available. Click to select UNO from the list, if it's not already been chosen. The dot here shows the selection made. The system remembers your settings, so you should not need to do this again. Now the system has confirmation of the board being used, we can now compile the sketch. Hover the cursor over this tick button. The word Verify appears here. This button will check the sketch that the typing is correct and that the system can understand what has been entered. Press the button. If all is well, the message here confirms that we are compiling the sketch. This progress bar shows you what's going on. And if all is well, displays this awful message, done compiling. You also get this confirmation in white in this black status screen below. Anything in red is an error and should be checked. All we now need to do is to upload our code into the Arduino. But, and this really is the final gotcha, where is the Arduino connected? There can be many USB ports on your device, and you have to make sure that your system understands which one is connected to your Arduino. Once again, you go up to Tools and select Serial Port from the drop-down options. Systems these days tend to be quite good at identifying which port is being used. Here on this Raspberry Pi, there is already a tick against the slash dev slash TTY ATM0. On Windows, it tends to be a COM port. Every setting, even on the same type of machine, may be different, so select the one that works for you. If the next bit fails, you may have to return and select a different port option here. With the correct port selected, we now need to upload the code onto the Arduino. Keep an eye on the two yellow communications LEDs on the Arduino mentioned earlier. During this section, they should flash as the Arduino communicates with your device. This little arrow button does the job. It recompiles a sketch and uploads it all in one. Click this and the compiling sketch message appears as before, but this time the code is also sent to the Arduino. 
The bar here charts the progress, and once completed, the Done Uploading message appears. Confirmation is also shown in white text in this black console pane. Red text tends to suggest that you have something wrong. If you do have a problem, then try pressing the arrow button again. If it fails a second time, then try selecting another port or reconnecting your Arduino. The code is uploaded, but how do we know? Is the Arduino saying hello world? Place your ear very close to the top of the Arduino and listen very carefully. Do you hear anything? Otherwise, click Tools from the menu and this time select Serial Monitor from the pull-down options. This new window should appear containing the Hello World message sent back from the Arduino repeatedly. Everything is working as programmed. Enjoy the heady aroma of success. You've successfully written your first sketch, compiled and uploaded it onto the Arduino, which is now running it. Notice how the code in the loop continuously repeats, printing, delaying, printing, delay. Most of this video has been spent explaining how to install and configure the system. Now that everything is set up, it should not need to be repeated. Modifying things is simple. To change the message the Arduino sends to anything you'd like, just modify the code inside the speech marks, recompile and upload. Close the old serial monitor and open a new one once the upload has completed successfully. This is going to be a well-trodden route in the coming steps. This has hopefully been a successful experience with the Arduino. Here, we have been introduced to the Arduino Uno, had a quick tour of the board and compared it to the Raspberry Pi, understood that the Uno will communicate with a wide range of devices and is supported by open source software that has been written to run with Linux, Mac, Android and Windows devices. It is platform and operating system agnostic. We saw how to download software that allowed us to communicate with the Arduino. We have seen how to write a small computer program called a sketch, and how this sketch is made up of two parts, the setup and the loop functions. We saw that sketches are made up of strange punctuation, including round brackets that are referred to as parentheses. We saw how to compile a sketch converting our English language into the machine language used by the electronics. We selected a port and uploaded the code onto the board via the USB link and opened a serial monitor to reveal the Hello World message. Now that the system has been installed and connected, it should not need to be reconfigured again in the future. Everywhere you look these days, there are references to digital. Digital computers, CDs, DVDs, digital radio, digital TV. But what is digital and what's the opposite of digital? What existed before digital, and can the Arduino cope? Briefly, digital is ones and zeros, ons and offs, and analog varies constantly. A simple example would be a light switch. A light switch is either on or off, it's digital. A dimmer, though, is different. With a dimmer, a light can be on or off, just like a switch, but it can also fade up and down with all of the values in between. The Arduino can deal with analog inputs and outputs and digital inputs and outputs. Let's now take a look one at a time to see how we program it to cope. <laughs>